to the Sheepless Life podcast. We are your hosts, Yvonne de la Flor and Severin Nassens. We have created this podcast as an extension of our Sheepless Life online program, and we invite you to join us as we go into honest, raw, and from time to time controversial conversations on everyday topics, womanhood, empowerment, motherhood, business, sisterhood, leadership, and life in general. Sit back, relax, feel free to take notes, and reach out to us on our social media to keep the conversation going. Welcome to episode 60 of the Sheepless Life podcast. It is a true honor for me, Severin, to guide you into this session with Yvonne de la Flor, who's on the other side of the microphone. Hi, Yvonne. Hello. I'm, I'm, I'm slowing down right now since today we're going to speak about flow. How are oh. you, Seve? I'm I'm doing good. I'm really uh, I'm having a happy day today because my oh. daughter, uh, it's my daughter's <gasps> birthday. Yes, we're gonna dedicate this podcast to her. Happy birthday to Inari. Happy birthday to anyone that's whose birthday is today. We love you, and yes, we're using our podcast for that because we can. <laughs> yes, and we choose to do so because life is a celebration. And today, while well, 13 years old, is a uh, mm. big leap forward into teenagehood. <laughs> and, I like uh, how you I'm, said it, mom. I I'm like so I'm so it. blessed. I'm I'm such a blessed mom, and uh, and it's really uh, perfect that today we are going to talk about the art of flow, uh, because my daughter she is a master of the art of slowing down, of the art of flowing with things. Uh, and uh, I am learning every single day from my uh, my little, not so little anymore, master here at home. Mm. Yes. <sighs> so <laughs> I'm just slowing down. You just said the art of, uh, she's, the, she's a master of slowing down. So mm -hmm. we, have three, we have three topics today for you all. And yes. I think, you know, in the situation that worldwide we're living. First of all, I do want to send, uh, we, we're going to be publishing these like a month after, uh, a couple of weeks after this has occurred, but I'm sending all my prayers in both into the past and into the future and right now to uh, Lebanon. Lebanon there, yes. was, uh, there was such an explosion, you know. Um, I feel those events in my soul. I think we're all one a human family, regardless of divisions. Um, and uh, I feel it. I feel it just, you know, 2020 has been, wow, what an educational year for all of humanity. I hope that everybody is learning how to be more sovereign in their thoughts, how to be kinder with one another, and how to, to flow and adapt in these times, and also how to be uh, more truthful with yourself. Mm -hmm. I think that these times require for us to be more compassionate and at the same time be more active. It's such a fine line because sometimes compassion is seen as passive, and compassion is actually action. Compassion is actually the ability to speak the truth uh, with kindness, but also also without uh, one self sacrificing who one truly is in order to please others or to cheat your own truth. So it's a, it's a very fine line. It's a year of that is requesting humans to adapt and also to rise. Not not only not an adaptability again, you know, it's a paradox because a lot of people confuse adaptability with obedience. In mm -hmm. oh yeah, I, I could go in a run right now. So why don't we go? <laughs> Anyways, uh, prayers for for uh, Lebanon, prayers for Lebanon, prayers for anyone going through a diagnosis of COVID, prayers for anyone that are you know their small businesses. I recently did another uh, bilingual podcast with a prayer for small business owners and uh, prayers for everyone that require right now just to remember uh, why are we here in humanity to have hope, to have faith and uh, be more present in the now, which this is where the art of flow is going to mm -hmm. serve you. So why don't we yes. go through the three uh, points that we spoke of? Seven. Well, the three, the three main topics that we want to share today is about the sacred pause, slowing mm. down and trust. And I must say that when I learned the principle, the sacred principle of re transcendental rebirthing, the sacred pause and slowing down, they have had such a huge impact in my life 
that I'm so grateful for because thanks to those principles and many others, but specifically those two, I have been able to keep calm, to really um, discern what's going on, where I want to go, what are my next steps to take without going into overwhelm. And, um, and thank you for that, Yvonne, for bringing those um, to us. Because in the end, it is, it is um, part of the transcendental rebirthing system that you have created and, uh, and you are bringing to, uh, to the world. So, um, the thank sacred- you for the tribute. Let me, let me, I'll, I'll let you, 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 you go with the sacred principle. But yes, very quickly, you know, these, these principles that we're speaking about it, yes, they are included in a, in a system method called transcendental rebirthing. Um, but I actually borrow them from observing nature. You know, from observing nature, from uh, learning from my teachers too. So just, you know, Severin will explain to you right now. But if these are principles that I always say to people, try them on like if they were clothes. Mm-hmm. These, you know, you can hear the voice of Severin right now. It's so calm, so like present. I'm even entering into meditative mode <laughs> right now with her, with her, with her slowdown and her transmission. And so when you hear these principles, do know that not, not only take them through the mind, but take them like if they were clothes, like there were things that you will try on as an experience. They truly, when you practice them, they will change your life. So thank you. Yes, they, they absolutely do. And thank you uh, for that, Yvonne. The, the sacred pause, the way I have integrated that into my life, because everybody integrates it in a different way. But the way to integrate that for me was to become really aware of my nervous system, of my central nervous system. And um, being a very active person myself, I would tend to go into overdrive, not necessarily in overwhelm, but I would go into overdrive. And I would go so fast that sometimes my my brain would be behind you know mm. i would be acting 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 and then my my brain would be behind me so applying the sacred principle of the sacred pause has helped me to match my brain with my actions to be more centered and to take these pauses and sometimes my pauses are a couple of seconds a couple of minutes and sometimes when i really feel it I go for an hour or I just take a complete break from everything I'm doing to go and center again, gather all my thoughts, gather everything that I have going on and just take that pause for me. It is sacred because it is for me. It is Mm -hmm. sacred because it is something that only one can do for oneself. It is something that nobody else can do for me. It is mine to do. It is my responsibility to allow my body, my mind, my brain, everything to settle down and come into that pause so that I can think clearly and I can act accordingly afterwards. So that is something that, uh, that's the way I have integrated that sacred principle into my life. And I absolutely recommend it to everybody to start practicing that pause. When you feel you're going into overwhelm, when you feel you're going into overdrive, when you feel that there's too much going on, stop. Stop wow. and pause. I can't, I can't explain it better than you said. I love how you said that your mind like was faster than your actions. And that's, you know, the sacred pause, what it helps us is to take a breather and the famous, and the famous thing. And I love how you said seven, you know, I really, I really, you know, (laughs) right now, I really don't have anything more to say, but, um, the sacred pause will help you just, I love how you said sacred is about you. Yes. That's what makes it sacred, that it's for you. You take a pause and the famous thing before, uh, thing before you act, right? Or thing yes. before you speak, this will give you that breather, that moment that will allow you to reset. If you have a trigger, if you're triggered into action, if you're going, you see, um, um, if you're going very fast in your mind and your actions don't follow and your emotional system hasn't catch up with them, you probably are going to get pissed off, overwhelmed, or depressed, or, or, or there's so many things that you can predict from not taking pauses, from not being present in the moment. If you remember that sacred pauses during the day, it could be a deep breath. 
It could be taking time off. You know, I often do that. Once a month, at least for me, I literally disconnect from phones, Instagram, all of the social media, and I go to a monastery to meditate or I practice silence by myself. I don't speak to anyone. I pause everything, projects, things, etc. So when I feel that there's a possibility in my mind to go faster than when my body's ready, I always pause. And sometimes it's not convenient. Um, most of the times it's definitely not convenient for businesses, but I know I know myself and you got to know yourself to know what sacred yeah. pause you want to take, that if I do not give that to myself, I eventually going to regret it eventually yeah. going to regret it. So that's the sacred pause. Beautiful explanation, Sebe. You know, it took me into like meditation. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm happy. I'm yeah. happy to share this because it is something that has changed my life and that goes hand in hand with slowing down. And you've mentioned this mm-hmm. uh, earlier on in the podcast, um, the way we slow down. And that is something that I have learned from you is to really listen to my nervous central central nervous system and be in tune with that. And when I feel that I am speeding up, when my heart is beating faster, when I get nervous, when actually I get tremors in my hands when that mm. happens, I have learned to listen. And since I've been listening more, the tremors, they come through a lot faster than they used to. So I get actually a physical sign that my nervous system is overloaded. And that is amazing because that helps me go, okay, time for me to slow down. And then I I use that sacred pause that we just mentioned to help me slow down and just breathe. And the the exercises that we have learned on breathing uh, from uh, Dan Brule from yourself with mm-hmm. Rebecca Montero. I've, I've been, I've had the true pleasure of being around people that are really breath masters has helped me learn to slow down my, my nervous system. And that will also help me slow down my brain. It will help me slow down my actions and become once again, more clear, more focused and centered and very present in the moment to attend whatever is going on and slow being able to slow down while you're in a crisis situation while you're dealing with a lot of stress while you're de- dealing with many situations that will take us into overwhelm that will take us into a, a heightened emotional state where our emotions eventually will take over if you are able to slow down you keep everything in check and you're able to manage those emotions instead of having the emotions manage you. Wow. Again, you know, yeah, I don't, I don't even know. I, this could have been a, a seven solo podcast. I love it. Um, the slowdown, you know, it's, you can feel how Severin is speaking. It's really an art of mindfulness. It doesn't mean a lot of people, when I share this, or I'm teaching slowing down, I always say these words, I am slowing down. And just feel it, whoever is listening to this podcast, just feel when I say I'm slowing down. Most of the times, it's very rare when I use with someone, slow down, my kids, my friends, you know, it's very rare that I choose to say that. When I choose to say that, it's because I feel like if I, even if I say I am slowing down or I recommend slowing down, it won't work. I got to break a pattern to, to, to support them not going to, into a pit that they don't want to fall. And so what I use is, is this, I am slowing down. Event, immediately for me, these words give an order to my mind. That I am slowing down. I am in charge of my mind. And what this does, and many people don't like this sometimes because they think I need to be productive. I need to get things done. My life, my experience, my work is the evidence that a lot of things you can do more productive with inner, inner, in your inner being, being slowed down and outer being super productive. Because Mm -hmm. if inside, again, we go back to a little bit what Severin said, you know, if your mind is faster, uh, you're doing a lot of things with your, let's say the physical form action, but your internal rhythm is super fast. Eventually your amygdala in your brain is going to be overactive. You are going to be in fight or flight, which there's nothing wrong with that. We can accomplish a lot of things. But to enter the zone, the famous zone, 
if you are sharp like an eagle, right? If you are calm uh, like the water, but you also know how to use the storm, you know, this I am slowing down. It's like declaring to yourself, I am the calm, but I am also the storm. I wanted to make it a little dramatic. (laughs) <laughs> I like to make should, a little dramatic. We should, we should enter some dramatic music in here. Now. Uh, dun, dun, dun. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, the 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 amazing thing about repeating that phrase to yourself it's it's NLP. It's a pro, you're programming your mind right. to to take action immediately, and it has an immediate impact on your nervous system. And this is this is the cool part of it scientifically. It has an immediate impact on your hormonal and on your nervous system. And that is something that you can go and check with your doctors and you can go ahead and check it with the scientists. But this is absolutely scientific. It's no woo-woo thing. Okay, yes. so for because I am I am I I am uh, I, I used to be the woo <laughs> the woo. No, I used to be a very skeptic on everything, on everything spiritual, on everything um beyond uh what i could test see with my and feel with my hands so um honestly after all of these years of practicing this is no woo woo this is scientifically proven that it absolutely works so go ahead and try give it a go uh and you will find out that this will this too will change your life uh forever if you choose to practice slowing down and taking sacred pauses Yes. Um, and and that leads us to the very last uh, piece of this podcast is go into trust. Ah, the famous word. So, what is trust for you? Ooh, trust for me is for in the first place to be able to trust myself, to know that I can rely on myself in any situation. Because I think if we can trust ourselves, if we are steady, if we uh, use every tool that we have at hand to um, to be able to move forward steadily, I know I can trust myself. And I, that's a question I've asked uh, some people. Like, would you trust yourself to go into business? Would, would you choose to go into business with yourself? Would you choose to go into a relationship with yourself? Would you trust yourself? Yes. For this and if the answer is yes then that's the that's where you can say that you're steady and then after that after being trustworthy to myself i dare trust other people i dare put my trust in others so that they can trust me back i hand over my trust to other people that i work with people like you for example mm-hmm. that i know that i have your back and you have mine and that is where trust is for me. Oh, well, I love it. And I, I love that you started with yourself, you know, because if there's no self-trust, if you don't have self-belief, if you don't have self-aid, you know, it's it's impossible to expect it from another. Yeah. Um, you know, for me, trust is an experience of being in the now, trusting the moment, trusting that what's happening in this moment is what I require to experience. Um, this This kind of like trusting God within your soul. And knowing who you are in its totality, um, I, I do not know that for me, I, I, I give my trust to others. You know, I just trust the moment so much. I just trust that force that is breathing through me right now, that that expands onto others, right? It's, it's more than giving them because then it's like, it's like if I'm taking it out from me, I'm putting it into someone. Uh, it's, it's an expansion. It could be a contraction too. You know, some people, you know, uh, you, you give your trust and if, if, some people haven't earned to be trusted, right? And, uh, and But the most important, as Severin said, you got to trust in yourself. You got to trust in your nature. You got to trust in that deep voice of wisdom and that is residing with you. And if you don't slow down, which you slow down and the sacred pause, pause will allow you to do something that all uh, the meditation teachers aspire to, to not think. <laughs> to not think. And that all athletes aspire to too, because that's how you enter the zone. To not think, just do it. The famous don't think, just do it. Uh, yeah. Michael Jordan is an incredible example of just being in such flow, such momentum, such such power force of being 
the zone that that in, inside you know it 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 he knew who he was he used all of the forces of who he can be and become to accomplish his goals and uh, you can do that too you can yeah. be a champion of yourself if you learn how to take pauses so you don't take into the 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 views of the world if you learn how to slow down to actually act when it's needed to let go when it's required and then to trust uh first yourself and then to to be selective in where you expand your trust or give your trust to. That's going to be super helpful because this will have you be part of the art of flow. Yeah. And I think in the end, it all comes down to faith, putting your faith in action. Uh, and that is one of the teachings that you've also, that I, I got from you actually four years ago, exactly uh, this month is put your faith in action, find your faith, and it has nothing to do with religion. It is just having that trust, that faith, that you are able to do whatever you want, whatever you uh, set out to do, and have that faith, put yourself in action, put you put your actions into motion. And, uh, and that brings a huge amount of trust. Uh, for me, for me personally, that is absolutely. So I think I think we cover all the points. You know, yes. um, we we really invite everyone listening to to think, to feel, and to take breathers in your life. You know, right now, uh, one of the greatest contributions you can do to mankind is to be good with yourself, is yes. to be kind with yourself, is to adapt, is to be able to change your mind, to let go, to let go, <laughs> go, <laughs> to let go, to let God or to let to let uh, God within, to let your wisdom breathe through you and to take it easy. Take one moment at a time, keep moving forward, keep taking your faith into action as Severine said, um, and just trust the moment. You know, things will get better are getting better. It is the nature of expansion and evolution. So I think we did it. Yes, it is. Well, thank you once again, Yvonne, for connecting with me for this podcast. And thank you everyone for listening. And we will hear you next time. Thank you for listening. If you enjoyed this episode, share it and tag us at Sheepless Life. We'd also love to hear from you. Join us on Facebook and Instagram and sign up for the free masterclass we've recorded for you on Sheepless Living on www.sheeplesslife.com. Step out of the herd, become radically you, and create the future you really want.